Hey everybody, Jake Reichbart here. Today I'm going to share with you a lengthy lesson excerpt. So have your guitars ready and we're going to have some fun together arranging a song. Perhaps you've seen some of my many hundreds of solo guitar arrangements I have here on YouTube and the inspiration for these arrangements is right here behind me as you can see. I grew up with this with these vinyls and uh, I draw pretty much from any kind of style imaginable from the pop music of the past hundred years, everything from Glenn Miller to Van Halen, Alan Holsworth to Motown, and pretty much anything in between. Beatles, I have perhaps uh, 25 Beatles song arrangements, 20 Steely Dan song arrangements, same for uh, Stevie Wonder, rock, hard rock, D Deep Purple, Led Zeppelin, and of course, tons and tons of classic jazz standards from the 40s and 50s, bebop, dance tunes, movie themes, and if you want to learn how to arrange any of these songs for solo guitar, I can teach you. Just like the excerpt that you're about to watch, which comes from a lesson that runs about 90 minutes, I have nearly 200 additional titles, and they are mostly song specific. I enjoy teaching through specific songs because I can show you hands-on how I approach arranging a song. What's nice about these lessons is that I don't just tell you, do this and you're done, but rather I'll take you through three or four or five different ways to play the same passage. I'll work with you on dynamics, on articulation, and a hundred other things that you cannot just put to paper. As I mentioned, these lessons run approximately 90 minutes. The introduction, which runs usually 15 minutes, focuses on the right hand and rhythm. And in this introduction, I go through my three pillars of rhythmic arranging, the first principle being melody and bass only, the second being rhythmic arpeggiation, and the third, of course, the down stroke that I play with my right hand fingernails to produce that backbeat that everybody asks me about. Nevertheless, I do have two main method lessons. The first one, how to arrange any song for solo guitar running two hours, and also an introduction to fingerstyle guitar and solo guitar arranging running two hours and 40 minutes. The information about these lessons, the cost, my full lesson list, as well as a link to the full performance of the song that we're working on today is below in the information. So expand the information, take a look, and let's get started. The tune starts with this C7 sharp nine shape in the second position and may include also the open E string and several bass notes. So ba the fingering first itself is C on fifth string, third fret, E fourth string, second fret, the B flat on the third string, third fret, and the D sharp on second string, fourth fret. So that portion of it is a C, seven sharp nine and I mix in that open E string at the rhythmically correct spot or as I see it correct spot in this way expands on, in a way, the original arrangement because here's a unique guitar opportunity uh, to take advantage of something that's unique to the guitar, and that is the idea of strings, adjacent strings in this case, ringing together to create a unique sound. It's quite dissonant right there, that E and D sharp ringing together, whereas the original arrangement might not have that sound, I, I thought it was kind of cool to let them ring together. So instead of stopping the note, the E, before going back to the D sharp, I let it ring. On the bass side of things, I should mention that although in the introduction we pretty much only use the C, later on you'll see me do additional bass notes and when I play live 
I might go nuts and play many additional bass notes. So it's worth mentioning that while you're holding these chord notes, you have all kinds of bass notes available. The C, of course, is the one. The G, the five. And a little line you can do. Which is the G, B flat, B natural, C. Also hit the open E. You can play all these notes E, F, F sharp, G, A, B flat. I'm at it, I might add additional technique. I'll try to bring the right hand in a little bit that I didn't mention at the beginning. It's a unique technique that I use sometimes. And if I want to get a 16th note feel with my bass note, I might play it with a thumb and forefinger going down, up, down, up, down. With a, maybe with one of those backbeats, it will sound like this. And with your fingers, you can pull up any any other beat that you'd like. Anyway, introduction. One more note is that you can play the notes staccato by kind of pressing down with your left hand and releasing. And also legato, well, it's not what you would uh, what you could think of as legato in uh, lead playing, but up more that the notes, the chord notes are uh, as long as possible. You, you keep your left hand down and let them ring until the next time the right hand plucks them so and the reason to do this is to kind of use the contrast between the two sounds to play one time short one time long maybe the first half short long. So as you can see, just presenting one little chord here is an opportunity to, to showcase, you know, uh, tons and tons of guitar ideas. So let's move on. That was the introduction. And as I'm getting ready to start the melody, I play a short bass line, G, G sharp, and A on the 6th string, and by the time I get here, that is the downbeat of where the verse starts. This position right here is a bar on the 5th fret, and it's just an A minor 7. I just hold down all the strings. I don't play them all necessarily. In fact, I play very little. I just play the A in the bass. And with fingers one and two, I play the melody and also an accompaniment to the melody. And the melody is the E to the F and back on the second string frets five, six, five, while sim simultaneously playing on the third string the C, D, to C. Now, again, with the right hand, there's two techniques that I might perform. If I'm playing it slow, and 
every time I perform the song, I might, I might approach it a little bit differently and play it a little bit slower, faster. I might pluck them like this, like a individual pluck. Other times, I might do... kind of a back and forth with fingers one and two and both fingers will play both strings a little bit more difficult to master I should mention also that that a note can also be played open oftentimes I'll play a closed note in the bass instead of an open one because if you play an open bass note, it's hard to control how to, when to stop it. You have to do an extra motion just to stop it. Whereas, in this case, you're already holding it down, and all you got to do to stop a melody, a bass note from ring, is just to let the finger go. Anyway. That is the first movement in A minor. counting how many melody notes there are here. So the next portion has five melody notes. And the basic shape that you'll be playing is a kind of a G7 in... I'm not sure what position to call this. I, uh, let's just say the open position. I play the G in the bass with my thumb. I also play with my third finger, the F on the fourth string, third fret. So G and F. With my second finger... I play the A on the 3rd string, 2nd fret. That is the basic chord. At first I also let the B open B ring and the open E, and that E is the first melody note. So I pluck all the notes with the E on top. The second melody note I add now with my pinky on the 2nd string, 3rd fret. I lift the pinky again to expose the B string, open B, second string. Next melody note is the A that I'm already holding down with my second finger on the third string. And the final fifth melody note is another B note on the open B string. So there's very little movement other than the pinky move once to get the D. So E, D, B, A, B. And during this time you can let the F and G ring or repluck them in fact. And here's that part what I mentioned about arpeggiating. So after I hit that last A note, notice that I'm doing ta 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 to kind of help with that uh, sense of rhythm moving forward. At the end of this bar, just before it moves on to the next group of melody notes, I hit the open E one more time. before moving to the next melody. <laughs> 